When I was uh, talking to the chef folks, they said, we'd really like to hear your story. We'd like to hear about your journey. So today, um, I'm going to talk, it's, this is going to be a little different, a little different than what I n normally do when I speak and what I speak about. This is going to be a little more personal. Um, it's going to be, to some extent, about me uh, and what I've gone through in conjunction with Ancestry with Chef. So the title of the talk is The Fellowship of Chef, Our Three-Year Journey with Chef. And uh, when I was in college... Just a little bit of introduction. When I was in college, I took a class uh, called The Liter Literature of the Spiritual Journey. And among other works like Dante, the works of Dante, uh, Bunyan's Pilgrim Progress, one of the books that we read as part of Literature of the Spiritual Journey was The, the uh, Lord of the Rings. And that was pretty cool. That was actually my first time, my first exposure to that. But what we learned in the class was that there are these archetypal journeys that we find in our culture, in our literature, in our, um, in our pop culture, movies. Later, um, Joseph Campbell uh, popularized this through the power of the myth. And it, it's now known uh, as this, uh, what we call a hero's journey. And the hero goes through a certain uh, steps, process in their journey. And what I really feel like is that with the journey that I've had, that Ancestry has had with Chef, is very much in line with this type of of a journey, a hero's journey, a spiritual journey. The first part of the journey is the call to the quest. It's the, you need to accomplish something. There is a mission for you to do. For me, I, I was brought into Ancestry to move the company into agile development practices. After a period of time, that led to trying to solve some other problems as agile started to bump up against other areas of the business, namely um, operations. And what happened to me was I ran across this book. When I saw this book and I looked at what we were trying to accomplish, what I wanted to accomplish, I picked this book up and I read this book. I stayed up all night. And I read this book basically cover to cover. This book called me to the quest. It, it showed me a possibility of what could be, of what ancestry could do, of how we could change what we were doing and how we could deliver value to our customer. Thus I was called. I now had a mission. Part of the journey is that somewhere along the line, you receive some supernatural aid. In the summer of 2011, I attended the Velocity Conference uh, in Santa Clara. I had read the book, Continuous Delivery. I knew what we needed to do. 
I knew where we needed to go. I could see what we had to accomplish. And at the time I was, but I, I was figuring out how, how would I get there? I ended up going to a session, a tutorial session that was put on by the folks at the time of Opscode, now Chef. And I hadn't had any real exposure uh, to, to this type of a tool. And I was there and as I learned about what Chef did and I learned about um, the, and, and applied that to the principles of continuous delivery, I realized this is something that I need. I need this tool. Well, um, as it turns out, the supernatural part of this, right, this is kind of interesting how things work out, is I went to lunch and I, you know, I was very impressed with this and felt like this would be a, a, a solution to what we were trying to accomplish. But I went to lunch and I sat down, I was eating lunch, and what do you know? Five guys from Ops Code came and sat at the table that I happened to be sitting at. Coincidence? Not if you believe in the spiritual journey. At the table, right, I said, wow, I, you know, I'm, I want to do continuous delivery. You know, part of that is we need a configuration management solution. We're doing this stuff by hand. We cannot speed up without this. And they said, hey, and this is why I just love the company chef. The people in the company, they said, John, we will come out, we will come out, we will bring a whole team, and we will spend a whole day with you, and we'll do whatever you want to do, and we will help you. Wow. Really? That's awesome. So I had my, now I had my help. We, uh, they came out, spent the time with us, got very excited, worked through some details, and now we were like, okay, we're ready to move forward. And they said, great, we've got our, our hosted solution. Oh, you know what, we're one of those, you know, we're an enterprise. Uh, we're not really, you know, we need something on premises. Oh, well, we just came out with this thing called uh, Private Chef. Um, but, you know, we, we've just barely, kind of even just barely announced it. And I said, well, I can't, I can't do anything until we get this on premises. I can't use a hosted solution, certainly not long term. At that point, it was a very interesting process. For the next two months, we actually, Ancestry is the first private chef or enterprise chef customer. And what happened was is, this is the front page of the contract. You can see private chef in 2011. The interesting thing is it took two months to build this contract from scratch. It didn't exist. And so we went back and forth. The interesting thing about this contract <laughs> is that this is the table of contents of the contract. That's page one. That's page two. That's page three. And notice on page three at the bottom, you may not be able to see it, but I'll blow it up. 50 pages in the contract. <laughs> A 50-page contract. Obviously, by now, that's considerably smaller, but pioneering. New stuff at the time. So we've crossed the threshold. Now, once we're now on the journey and cross the threshold, you have mentors and helpers that come to your aid to come assist you on your journey. First, we had Christopher Brown, at the time CTO of, of Opscoder Chef, came in and taught us about his experience in EC2, um, taught us about how to develop software faster, uh, infrastructure, et cetera. We had 
at the time, Todd Feinroth, sales, um, helped with creating the contract, uh, just an immense support at the time. We had Joshua Timberman, who came in and gave us training, did a wonderful job in training, uh, just, just top notch. We had, of course, when we actually now went to do it, Adam came stayed, uh, came to Ancestry for uh, about a week. And while they installed the, uh, at that time, a very custom version of Private Chef, um, he saw what we were trying to do. And we ended up having uh, just very, very deep conversa conversations and discussions around how to actually do continuous delivery in Chef. We were trying to apply Chef to that process, which really hadn't been done before, and Adam was there along the way to help us to understand how we could apply that. Just a, just a fabulous, fabulous experience and fabulous resource. We've got folks like Jay Wampold Marketing. We've got uh, experience with Lucas Welch, um, case studies, and uh, contacts with the media. I mean, just, you can see here, and then finally Barry, Barry Chris, the CEO, since he's become CEO, has just been a super support uh, to us at Ancestry and, and, and to myself personally. These guys are my friends. These guys care about me, not just as a customer, but as a person. And for that, I am grateful. In the journey, there's always the master guide. And the person that I'm going to put up here is going to be a little surprised. But I had a key individual. There was a time when we started to implement this where I believed that it was not going to work. I had a team put together. They were developing. They were coding. And it was not happening. It was not moving forward. It was floundering. They did not know how to do what we wanted to do. And I brought in the master. <laughs> Dan Gilmer, when he came in, he understood what to do with the infrastructure. He understood how to get make Chef do what we needed to do within the context of what we were trying to do, what we wanted to make happen. At the time, we have, a, we have a very large Windows installation. At the time, Chef had very minimal support for Windows. Dan would spend hours upon hours creating infrastructure scripts in PowerShell, getting things to work, and then handing that over to the development team and say, okay, now, code this upright, code this in a way that we can reuse it. And the, the team was now, I mean, we just took off just like, like on a racetrack. I mean, we were just, just moving forward at a rapid pace. Once we had those PowerShell scripts in place, then we were able to eventually convert them into Ruby. And, but with, with Dan's mentorship and guidance in that, we finally were on the road to success. Along the way, usually in the, in the spiritual journey, the hero's journey, unfortunately, there's a comrade that falls. And uh, in this particular case, this is, a, uh, this is a chef employee that actually became became quite close to me and quite meaningful to me because even though my interaction with him was I could count on one hand, he reached out to me several times, gave me support, gave me opportunity. And when I learned that he wasn't going to be around anymore, I was nearly devastated. And that person was Mitch Hill. the previous CEO of Chef. On more than one occasion, 
he would reach out to me and put me in contact with individuals. In several cases, he asked me to contact. He put trust in me to contact key potential customers. And probably one of the more memorable, memorable examples that I have was Mitch put me in contact with uh, a lead infrastructure person in a very large uh, air, major airline car uh, carrier. And in that exchange, as I went through our experience with Chef and I uh, and talked with him, uh, we had a, a, a very interesting exchange as I wrote to this individual as they were trying to decide what they wanted to do. And I said, you know, of course you can do what you want to do, but I would feel a lot safer if I knew that your infrastructure was configured in Chef before I stepped onto one of your planes. <laughs> Mitch, he was CC'd on that email and he wrote back and he's like, man, that is the best thing. I love that. And he was just offered that support and when I found out that he wasn't going to be on the journey with us, I was devastated because he was a true friend. At some point in the journey, there's an atonement. There's a reconciliation. There's a time where the journey that you set out to do is actually validated and it is made real. We had been doing, uh, we had been using Chef for quite some time. We had done continuous delivery. We had seen uh, drastic changes in the business. I mean, our deploys were, we were doing multiple deploys a day, but there was a time, uh, but, but even with that, even though those things were going well, um, I just never felt like the business still really, truly valued the investment we had made until August 25th, 2013, last year. What happened on this day was a major outage. An outage that, was, that caused Ancestry to be down for uh, nearly a day, many hours. At the root cause of the problem was a data service that could not keep up with demand. And so when it was discovered that this was the root of the problem, the immediate thing that came from the, from the, from the development staff was, okay, we need to spin up more of those servers to handle the demand. Let's go do it. On the other end of that phone call were the engineers that said, we can't do that. And every, what? What do you mean you can't do that? Don't you have your stuff in chef? Don't you have it in configuration in, in chef? No, we didn't do that yet. Really? And at that point, when the realization was is that we could not spin up another, this was on bare metal, by the way, this particular service, when, it, when the realization was that we couldn't do that, the only option we had at that point was to configure machines by hand in order to restore service. And that process took hours. In fact, two, three, four people worked for a day to just get those machines configured to get our system back online. The atonement, the reconciliation, the justification at that moment became real because at that point when they realized that there was a service that had not been chefized, as we call it, it was that can no longer be the case. Everything must be chefized. At some point when you've accomplished the quest, you return with your reward. Sometimes called the return with the elixir or the magic potion, right? 
the thing that you, that you show that said, you know, we, we, we obtained what we were, we were wanting. That magic potion, for me, was when I first, remember when I first started on the journey and I wanted to accomplish continuous delivery? I had a problem that I needed to solve. I needed to get automated configuration. I had a tactical, a tactical problem that I needed to solve. When I finally realized that I truly had something magical, when I realized that Chef was not just a tool that was there to solve this particular problem, but that it was a tool that became a strategic, that became something that let us move into other areas of the business that we needed to move into. Once we had that magic potion, we've completed the quest, we're now able to have the freedom to live, right? It's the, we're free. We can do what we need to do. And what Chef has allowed us to do, looking now in hindsight, is that things like going into a different infrastructure, like the cloud, or a private cloud, okay? These are now possible. I have an interesting story. When we, at one point, we had a large consultancy come into Ancestry to, to, to look at building additional data centers. This was a little while ago. I like the line, if you haven't heard this, I like this line, friends don't, today, friends don't let friends build data centers, okay? But this is a little while ago. Um, this company, this consultancy came in and said, well, if we're going to build a data center, you know, John, I, I know you're over the team that does this configuration, um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have to move your, your applications into this other data center, right? They, they call this lift and shift. And I said, well, we don't need to do that. And they were, looked at me like, what do you mean? I said, well, nearly everything chefized. We've got a few things that aren't, but nearly everything is. And, they, and no lie, he said, what is chef? This is a large consultancy. And I said, well, it's automated configuration management. All of our infrastructure is in code. Just tell me the IP address of where you want this to go, we'll hit the button, and it's done. At that moment, he realized, well, there's really not a whole lot left for me to do then. I said, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we had now, in hindsight, we had something that was key to the business, that enabled the business the ability to move in ways that we had not anticipated. At this point, I want to say that I believe that Chef is the single most impactful tool that we obtained in our transformation. It has enabled the transformation at Ancestry.com. It is strategic. I'm delighted. Thanks.